Coach Greg Hudson here in the Pirate Radio studios. And Coach Hud, we've had a chance to walk down memory lane with uh, a gentleman you coach with, Brett Hickman, uh, some former players, Brandon Simmons, Dakota Marshall. And uh, we'll do it again now with one of those greats on the defensive line. What a line it was. We still talk about it to this day here in Greenville. Uh, Number 53, Scotty Robinson joining us on the Pirate Radio Live line today. Scotty, how you doing, man? Listen, I just want to tell both of you how long I have waited for this. <laughs> Hello, officer. <laughs> how are you? Scotty, you're breaking up on us a little bit. You still there? Uh, Is that a phone that belongs to the city or something like that? <laughs> Scotty, can you get to a better spot? You're breaking up on us. Uh-oh. There you go. Let me see if I can. Is that better? Yeah, we got yeah. you now. You got a walkie-talkie oh, and a phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I was ass. saying, Coach, I just want to tell you how much I love and appreciate you before I say anything oh, that man. Uh, uh, give me up-downs for. No, this uh, – Scotty's the best, man. We – love was there with that team in that unit. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Love and respect, admiration. There's tons of words you could throw out there about – that that oh eight oh nine run we had that whole tr- time that you were there, Scotty, was just you you were part of the the foundation that and believed in what we were selling there down the street in the hotel on those late nights in recruiting and uh, yes sir and you guys believed it and then you went out and executed it and it was a well, blast to watch. I do think I have a, a different opinion if I can jump into that because. Um, you know, I, I tell people all the time, it, it was not anything that, that I needed to be sold on. Um, from, from day one, just, just stepping foot on campus and getting a chance to meet these legendary coaches that, you know, still to this day, uh, you guys haven't missed a beat. Um, you know, so for me, it was really just I had an opportunity to be in a place that I felt like I didn't belong. So, you know, it, it was no selling for me. I, I, was, I was sold from day one. Well, you belonged, and we were glad you stayed. <laughs> Well, speaking of staying, we talked about this earlier in the show, Scotty. So, ECU's baseball season just ended, and everybody's kind of freaking out. We've seen five, six, seven guys enter the transfer portal, and it is just such a part of college athletics today. And I'm just curious. You you can't kind of put in your brain, if the rules were the way they were now, what you would have felt in 2008, 2009. Uh, but I mean, were you locked in a hundred percent? Did leaving the school ever cross your mind while you were here all those years? You know, I, I'll be totally honest. Um, I think my my sophomore year, if there was ever a time that you know I, I would consider leaving, um, and I don't think it lasted more than a day because it was it was really as simple as, a who else is going to want me, <laughs> and b uh, the other part was the relationships that I had uh, with, with my teammates. Um, on that team, you know, it, it was second to none. There was there was no place like like home, uh, and, and Greenville was home. And even if uh, even if I didn't play it down, you know, you you could not convince me that there was a place more special than, than East Carolina and being a part of that team. So um, I can say that with a hundred percent confidence. That that is a big no. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, it might have been a little different now if, if the portal was around with that defensive line. Yeah, it'd have been uh, it'd have been interesting I, to see. I, just, I don't. I just don't. I couldn't see it. I mean, I think with with the guys that were part of that team, and you know, I, I talked to a lot of those guys even even to the day, and, and the conversation is always, you know, we were really uh, we were really guys who had been written off from some of the bigger schools, and here we are. You know, we all find our way to East Carolina, and even before we realized how special that those teams would be, you know, we were. We were all a bunch of guys who felt like we didn't belong in other places, and we found a home at, at East Carolina. So, you know, I just think that that place is second to none to me. There, there is no place better than, than Greenville, North Carolina, uh, at least through my experience. So, it's a good place. Seems to draw me back. Hud, uh, if you and Scotty and myself had a dollar for every time Skip Holtz dropped "Humble and Hungry," we'd be rich men. Oh, we said that a lot. But uh, just hearing Scotty talk, I was thinking about C.J. Wilson. Jay Ross. I don't think I interacted with Linville as much as I did maybe the other guys, but 
a, a humble group, right? Like, I don't think did they know how good they were when they because they were uh, they were all great guys, even as as college kids, young yeah, adults. I believe they knew it. I would I hope they knew it and felt it. But they also had a common denominator that was their uh, their leader in that room. It may have kept them in line and a little humble. Oh yeah, was, the, was Rock Rogan. Yeah. Shout, shout out to Coach Rock. Um, I, I still catch myself at times uh, just just quoting them and and just taking on that mindset that you know, Coach Hud, I as humbling as that is to hear that you know we thought we you know we were good and all those other things. I we just had a different, totally different opinion of that. You know, we all knew that every day we came uh, to the facilities, but we didn't work we would be replaced. You know, it, it, it was really as simple as that. And, and coach rock had a lot to do with that. But, but honestly, I think that defensive staff that was put together at East Carolina. Um, and I can't brag enough about that coaching staff. Like we all really felt like if we didn't do everything that we could to better ourselves for the betterment of that team, that we could be replaced and they could roll anybody in there and do our job. So, um, you know, I think that's what kept us, kept us with that, that fire in our belly with, with any opponent that we faced. You know, we didn't care that they were ranked. We didn't care that it was West Virginia. We didn't care that it was Carolina, Virginia Tech, because no. there was nothing that they could do to us that was going to be tougher than our practices and the standard that was set by our coaches. So. That's true. And we knew we were going to win. We knew we had a chance to win every game. We really did. And the confidence <laughs> level was extremely high. And, of course, when Scotty and that D-line would run out there, a lot of my worries went away. Yeah, well, uh, us as viewers as well. Uh, so Dakota had some great stories about Rick Smith chewing him out pretty much every day. Uh, I guess you didn't get the wrath of Rick much, uh, Scotty. You had uh, Coach Rock and Hud yelling at you all the time, I guess. Oh, oh no, I think I found a way to make all the coaches. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was very creative. He <laughs> was equal opportunity. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> I got it from everybody, even – even the offensive coaches, I'll never forget. And and I love I will love Coach Kirkpatrick to the day that I die for this. Um, Coach Hud is gonna kill me for telling this story. Uh my my the summer of my junior year, myself and Jay Ross, uh one of my, my roommate, my best friend on that team, we came up with this grand idea that uh over the summer we had an RA that didn't really care for us too much in a in a uh in one of the dorms. So we came up with this idea that we were going to set off some fireworks uh, in one of the dorm rooms, um, and, and the RA just so happened to be in a bathroom where we threw the fireworks. Oh, so needless to say, I think all the defensive coaches were out recruiting, but Coach Kirkpatrick made sure to uh, come and pay us a visit that night. So oh, yeah. Was, I was pretty fair across the board. <laughs> I was under the need-to-know basis on stuff like that. I was like, do I need to know? No, nah, no, okay. You can't handle it. Coach, I, I begged him. I begged him not to tell you. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> oh, crap. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what else was I going to say to you, you know, idiot? <laughs> you know? And, well, you know, I, I guess the, the deed was already done, but it, hell yeah. scared as I was of having that conversation with you, and I mean this with all due respect, nothing was going to compare to when I saw Coach Rock. Oh, that would have made me nervous. I would have left my <laughs> office because he's right next to me. Just to get away from the things flying or the wall coming down. Absolutely, absolutely, and it, it was it was fire and brimstone. Man, he'd pull you guys in there, and there'd be about five guys in my office sitting there just listening, and we we're laughing. <laughs> they come run, petty. They come running down the hall, and they just sit there. <laughs> well, Scotty, are you aware that uh, and some of that rock was probably organic, but Coach Hud used to also wind them up if he felt. <laughs> what I guess if you were bored, Coach Hud, or if you, I don't know, is you'd wind Coach Rock up, right, and, and yeah, get him after his guys. Yeah, I probably did oh, some. No doubt. It, I I would egg Rock on just to get to you guys, and you know, I'd tell him you were loafing in practice, and I didn't think the effort was real good, and we weren't taking off, getting off blocks, and and I was completely lying, but I was, you know, trying to get through a Wednesday and have a good practice. Coach, our senior year, I don't know if you remember this, you would actually come and tell us that you were going to do it before you did it. <laughs> oh, we, we, we knew. We knew it was a thing. We knew that there was nothing we could do about it. <laughs> I'd walk in there. Oh, my gosh. You guys just start shaking your head. Please, no, don't do that. <laughs> 
But you got her. The funniest ones, you guys got it. But when Rock was coaching the linebackers, that was that was some of the funniest stuff that ever went on in that facility. When he was teaching them how to run through an open door, and Jim, <laughs> those guys were afraid to go in that meeting room. <laughs> Man, Scotty Robinson, Greg Hudson here. Uh, Scotty, you made a lot of plays, but Chandler, I'll ask you what when you think of Scotty Robinson, what play? comes to your mind i definitely think about him slamming case keenum to the ground <laughs> oh that was awesome the rag doll uh and again uh, you were in on a lot of plays but we still talk about that one and remember that one i'm sure you do too scotty absolutely um the, the biggest thing even in that game um it was a lot easier just to to pin my ears back and go as hard as i could and not even worry about mistake because i knew if i did anything wrong there was a guy beside me by the name of Linville joseph that would clean up any and every mistake that I could ever make. <laughs> so he was like Ray Donovan of football. He was just the cleaner, the cleaner. <laughs> oh yes, sir, yes, sir. So that that just playing with that team, uh, playing specifically with that line, um, those were the absolute greatest times. We 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 were really locked in and held each other accountable, uh, and we knew you know we knew what the expectation was. So. A lot of fun playing with those guys. I don't have your play uh, chart for that game, Scotty, but I can tell you that Case Keenum threw the ball 75 times in that game. How tired were you after that championship? I, I think, uh, and I'm going to be totally honest, especially at that point of the year, we could have went 200 plays. Yeah, they weren't tired. Than I. Man, no, they weren't tired. Uh, we, we knew what was at stake. Uh, we knew how important that game was. And we knew uh, we had a coaching staff that, you know, they, they could not have planned a, a better scheme for what we were facing. So, yeah, we could have went all night if that's what it took to win that game. They still haven't blocked you on the tar stunt into the boundary. Coach, listen. That was all day. The tar is a half a jet. I, I, still, <laughs> I still get goosebumps from thinking about some of those plays. <laughs> and then we – you guys were so good at it and understood everything that – we had the call in that game because Rock was not with us that we said made the Rock call, and you would run it in whether we were in uh, tight or split or bench or field. You guys were 100% on it that day, and that's why they also ran, I think, 28, 28 yards on 31 carries, and you spent the whole day <laughs> yes, in the backfield. Yes, sir. That was that was definitely uh, that was one of those highlights that you know I'll, I'll definitely carry with me uh, until the end of time. You on Keenum and uh, Nick Johnson on the shallow crosser on that same on the play. Uh, I think afterwards. Oh, oh, Nick played completely out of his body. <laughs> yeah, he he played out of his body. Um, it, I think I I had just as much fun watching him, and I think another guy on that team that that went crazy that they Levin Neal. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. Him, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, it, it was when he did get the ball off. There was nothing like turning around and seeing seeing our secondary just obliterate people. Yeah, they were flying around. Played a lot of blue. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Scotty, I want to uh, to hear some, some other stories if you got them, but catch us up on um, your post-ECU career. Did you did you play any football professionally at all? Uh, I, so I, I messed around for, for a couple years, uh, just, just really trying to find a home. Had some opportunities um, in the NFL with the Browns and the Chiefs. I uh, spent some time playing um, some arena ball. Had some opportunities in Canada. Um, but more than anything else, uh, right after I graduated, my daughter was born. So uh, life life took a different turn for me. Um, and, and for me, you know, I really, when I got to East Carolina, I think I had gotten literally everything that I could have asked for out of the, the game of football. So, you know, just the thought of, going to a team and, and, you know, NFL professional teams, they're a business. Um, there was nothing like the locker room that we had at East Carolina that, you know, football almost became not fun uh, once I left East Carolina. Just, mm. you know, it was it was everything to me during those times. So, um, yeah, football was fun. Uh, my, my, my best years are absolutely East Carolina. And then uh, you were in, got into law enforcement, right, Scotty? Is that, are you still doing that today? What are you up to these days? Yeah, so I, I spent about six years in law enforcement. Uh, I, I don't know who convinced me into doing that, but, um, you know, it, it was fun. I definitely had a heart for service for it. Um, now I'm actually finishing up my master's in uh, clinical mental health counseling. So 
hopefully one day I can I yeah. can give some guys advice about you know how to how to get the most out of life and and, and play for a coach like uh, Coach Rock Rogan. That's awesome, Coach. Okay, you talk a lot about that topic. That is. Uh... There's there's one of the answers right there. If a guy like Scotty Robinson is involved, that means there's going to be some people getting help because uh, he will definitely reach them because he cares. I appreciate that, Coach Hood. And, uh, Scotty, you still to this day have a great personality, but, but back even then I remember you had a great personality. You would have been, and this is probably a sore subject, but you'd have been awesome for NIL opportunities. Uh, so <laughs> I know you hate you missed on that, but uh, what would uh, – if Scotty had his choice, uh, who would you have signed an NIL deal in 2009? I would send me the Cubbies. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, yeah. <laughs> uh, sign me up. They, they wouldn't have to pay me just to get this far. Scotty could have done commercials for anybody, yeah. and it would have been a sitcom. <laughs> Unity. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I could have got Coach Hood on the trolley in, in, the, in the NIL commercial. Oh, man. There you go. That would have been bad right there. <laughs> All right, you got any embarrassing stuff or funny stuff uh, that we don't know about Greg Hudson, Scotty? Dude, let, let me tell you this one that I know Coach Hood is going to kill me and and. I love Coach Hood's family like like my own. Like, let me just start there. So I'll tell you this little story. Uh, senior year, Coach Hood made it a habit of coming to football practice on his motorcycle. It was the baddest motorcycle I had ever seen in my life. <laughs> right? So I'm I'm outside of the practice field and I'm out there with my my then girlfriend at the time. It's a good one. Coach Hood's already changed and, and did all of that stuff. And I'm in the middle of the street talking to my girlfriend. Coach Hud pulls up. And uh, in, in true Coach Hud, the stud fashion, the stud. he looks at me was like, he was like, hey, man, what you got going on? I said, oh, nothing. You know, I'm about to, about to go to the house. My girlfriend is paying me no attention. I'm trying to answer Coach Hud, and he's just revving his Harley. But she's not hearing a word that I'm saying. <laughs> she says, hey, uh, let me know if you get bored. And he drives off. And my girlfriend says, who is <laughs> Man, <laughs> HUD the stud. <laughs> Keep him humble. <laughs> Keep him humble. Man. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good bike. That was a good one. You stopped bringing your girl around, I guess, after that? Oh, yeah. She, she was no, unfortunately, she was an athlete as well. So she, she spent just as much time over at the weight room and everywhere else as anything. So that was a little, little. How many times you do that move, Hud? That wasn't just for Scotty, no. right? I'm sure you used that one a few. No, times. no, that was just for Scotty. That was just for Scotty, specifically. Right. <laughs> I, you know, I believe that. <laughs> say, the relationship didn't work, so thanks, Coach Hud. Scotty, yeah, was also, he, he was helping you out. Scotty was one of the guys that was notorious of when you would would say the uh, lines from the movie clips we would watch. He'd be out there talking like John Rambo, and oh yeah, you told us you know, about that. Gonna, yeah, he was hilarious. I mean, he set the yeah. tone out there every day. There was going to be something that Scotty said, did, or did to somebody that was going to get everybody laughing every day, and that that was probably one of the highlights of the day. Well, you you know what? It, it was it was very easy, uh, especially especially towards the latter years. Um, I think I've seen it here, and I've, I've said it to a lot of people when you talk about true player coaches. Um, you know, Coach Hud is, is is as tough as they come. Coach Rock is as tough as they come, but I tell you what, our senior year, I think we really got an opportunity to, to to see the family men that they are, and they really just, you know, we've seen different versions of, them. you know, we all understood that we were in it together. Uh, I think we felt like we were just as much a part of that program and their family um, as they were. So, you know, practices and, and just being around those guys, when people talk about what they miss about football. Uh, Coach Hudd and those guys used to talk all the time about, you know, you guys are going to miss camp. You guys are going to miss winter conditioning. That's absolutely right. I don't miss game days in Greenville. I miss the locker room. I miss the uh, the hotels the yeah. before the games and things like that. Like, that's that's what made that's what made that team in my time at East Carolina special. I miss the Thursday meals back on the deck at the house. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Coach, I, I still miss that cake. I know you guys are talking about the cake story. Uh, I would love to give my point of view. <laughs> Is this a rebuttal? I would love to get that. 
Go for it. We're going to do a whole 30 for 30 on the cake story and have like 30 different stories on that one story. Oh, so I don't think anybody's vantage point is going to be better than mine. <laughs> cake went over my head. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're, we're sitting in there. Uh, it's our, it's our wrap up meeting uh, right before we're going to break the, the, the get ready to travel. And Coach Hud's wife, um, every game we won, she come in and she had this huge sheet cake. I mean, cake as big as Limbo. Like it's, it's, sitting, it's sitting down front, and uh, we're watching. We're about to watch film. I think uh, the the thing with the coaches, it didn't matter how good we played. We could always play better. So Coach Hud comes in, and he, he's piping hot. Piping <laughs> hot. And I don't know who we, who we beat the week before. So he cues up the film. We turn the lights down, and Khalif Mitchell <laughs> – Khalif Mitchell yells, roll that beautiful bean footage. Oh, <laughs> you could have heard a pin drop on carpet. Coach is like, who said that? Somebody flips on the lights, and next thing I know, this sheet cake is flying over my head. Thank God I didn't hit anybody because, you know, you talk about CTE and concussion. <laughs> yeah, that that would have been it. So Coach Hood tosses the cake, walks out. We're afraid to move. Like, number one moves a muscle until J. Ross gets up. And he's the first one. And J. Ross knew who he was at that point. He picks up the cake. He was like, man, this cake is bomb. He started <laughs> eating the cake. <laughs> he the cake. Oh, man. He, he's the only one that touches it. He's the only one that eats the cake. But he was like, man, this cake good. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we had the, uh, the, the crab trees would bring the ice cream. Nick and Eddie brought us the ice cream. They they saw the helicopter blade ice cream or uh, cake flying around. <laughs> That's awesome. I uh, got uh, Casey Jane Hudson said that oh. damn motorcycle. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, got a few uh, former pirate names in here too. Javon Brumsey said them get right drills cure the common cold. Oh, and I'm glad uh, oh, Fred Wilson says laughing my ass off. I got to tell you, I was a young pirate radio guy when Fred Wilson played. I wasn't yeah. intimidated by many people, but Fred was an intimidating dude. Fred, don't shake his hand. <laughs> you were going to the hospital. <laughs> he was a freaking wall, man. He could prick, he could pick a Volkswagen up with his hand. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, cool to see that name uh, in the chat as well. Uh, well Scotty, uh, we're about up against it, man, but it's been awesome to have you on. I love uh, – I just like – kind of reconnecting y'all or just hearing y'all tell those stories audibly to one another because i can see the respect that uh coach hud has for you you have for him and uh just uh gives you some good pirate feelings from a guy watching it from the outside we love you man um you know i, I know we're i know our time is, is limited but you know coach hud i just want to let you know uh for someone who you know as much confidence as you instilled in not only me but a lot of other guys um, when I say this, I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Like, I I have memories at East Carolina that have molded me and carried me into everything that I do as a man, as a father, um, and just everything else about my life. And it, it, it all began and ended uh, with my time at East Carolina. So I cannot express to you how much gratitude I have uh, for you guys taking the chance on a kid from Salisbury, North Carolina, who didn't belong. And I know you, you said I did, but, Coach, let's be honest. I was 6'3", 175 pounds Man. when I stepped foot at East Carolina. Actually, you were the prototype. We were tall, could run, and were tough. We didn't care about the rest. That's amazing. That's amazing. We knew we were going to feed you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I just want to tell you how much I love. And oh, I'm thank you. And there's not, a, there's not a, a soul on this earth who can tell me any different about how great you are. Thank you, buddy. Man, that's awesome. He could have been bigger if he didn't throw that damn cake on the ground. <laughs> he had a few that's more pounds on him. Pounds. <laughs> at least six pounds in that cake alone. <laughs> Scotty, you're the man. Thanks, man. Let's let's do this again sometime. Uh, let's do it during football season. I love it. All right. Would absolutely love it. Man. Love you, Scotty. That's awesome. Love you. Can't wait to see you. Yes, sir. Number sure. number 53, Scotty Robinson. Uh, don't bring your girl around HUD and his motorcycle. And watch out for the cakes. That's, that's great stuff, man. Uh, had a great personality then, still does today. And uh, it was awesome to hear those words he had to say about you and about this program.